Welcome back to Life With Us TV. It's your girl, Annette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, in today's video, we're going to talk about 12 of the biggest rookie mistakes that the Carnival Cruiser usually makes, but then we're going to teach you how to avoid them. Let's get into this video. The first rookie mistake that first-time Carnival Cruisers usually make is this. They overspend in the pictures. Yeah. <laughs> like, they just go ham. And right. It's, and it's easy to do. They Fair. make those pictures look so great. Yeah. And if you're a person like us, you don't take pictures on a regular. So when someone takes pictures yeah. and they edit your skin so flawlessly and you look good, you smell yep. good, you feel good, it's time for you to spend some money. Right. Don't get caught up. Don't get caught up. If you need to, buy a couple of them and walk away. But if you know that that's your thing and that's your vice, go ahead and purchase one of the picture packages. Yes. And that will avoid you to spending two, three hundred dollars in pictures. Like we did. Like we did. On our first cruise. <laughs> <laughs> Not a picture is on the wall. Not now. <laughs> the second biggest rookie mistake that first time Carnival Cruisers make is not knowing the total cost of their vacation. Number one, you need to know what the total cost is to be able to get on the ship. You only would know that is you run all the way through Carnival's thing, you do your booking, and at the end, it'll give you the total cost, what's gonna include the taxes, the port fees. The next thing you wanna consider is how you're gonna get to the ship. Are you flying? That's a cost. If you drive, driving. That's a cost. That's a cost. The well, hotel. No, the hotel. You got to stay at the hotel. That's a cost. What you're going to be wearing. That's, that's a, a big cost. cost. That's a cost. Nails. Feet. Right. Right. Anything that you need in preparation that needs to be purchased before you go on. So don't think about a cruise. Just think about a vacation. Vacation. Yeah. So the cost ain't only the destination. It's the prep on your way to. And then also once you get there. But most time people, you ask somebody, hey, how much you spend for your cruise? Oh, I spent 1800 Nah, it's probably really, 3000 But really, they probably spent 3000 after the after all the costs is added up. Mm -hmm. So yeah, know the total cost. The third rookie mistake that most first-time Carnival Cruisers make is this. They don't pre-purchase their gratuities. And some people say, well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tip people in cash or tip people as I see them. Yeah. Carnival doesn't know that. Nope. So what they're going to do is on top of that, they're gonna charge you the night before you get off the ship. And it's more expensive when they charge it at the end. For your gratuities anyway. If you're not paying attention, you'll walk off that ship and you have double gratuity right. to <laughs> everyone on that ship. But you do have an opportunity to take those off, but you have to stand in the guest services line along with all the other people that got automatically charged the night prior to right. getting off the ship. And I've seen that line and I won't trade places with you, I know that. I'm a really big fan of paying prepaid gratuities and then also tipping those people that I feel went extra above and beyond right. um, separately. I'll do that as well, but take care of the people that take care of you. The fourth biggest rookie mistakes that first time cruisers make is they go to the buffet for breakfast versus going to the main dining room to get sea day brunch on right. sea days. Now, I want to preface this. Sea day brunch is it's only sea. on sea day. What is a sea day? Because some people <laughs> will ask, like, what is a sea day? We're all on the sea. What does it make? Right. So a sea day is the day that you're at sea on the way to a destination. So day one you leave, that's not a sea day. Mm -mm. Day two will be sea day. Usually. Usually. So that's a sea day. So that day you're not going to a destination. Yeah, you're on yeah. the ship 24 hours. Right. That's a sea day. <laughs> So yeah, don't make that mistake of not participating in C-Day Brunch. Cause so I'm gonna tell you, it's a game changer. It's a game changer because they be they be doing their thing, man. When they Stinking cook. eggs if that's oh. your thing. Yeah, so they got a lot of good stuff, man. So yeah, don't make the mistake. So go to the main dining room and get that C-Day Brunch. Rookie mistake number five that I see not only first time Carnival Cruises make, yeah. they sometimes <laughs> get the season first. Uh, yeah, they, they get them. Yep. On embarkation day, as soon as you get to the Lido deck, you're going to see the fancy drinks. Some are going to be in whale tails. Yep. Some are going to be in pineapple. Some in disco balls. And they're or they're just in regular glasses. And they're going to take that um, glass and be like, "Welcome onto on board, sir. Here you go." <laughs> 
And if you are a person that has ever visited any island and been to an all-inclusive, that's normal for them to give, give you, you a, welcome, a drink. welcome drink because that is an all-inclusive vacation on, in most cases. On a carnival cruise, mm. it's not included. That drink is not included. <laughs> nope. And what is going to happen is as soon as that exchange happens from welcome aboard, <laughs> sir. Thank you, ma'am. Can you go <laughs> ahead and sign <laughs> here? <laughs> You're like, wait a minute, what am I signing? I thought you, this was a welcome drink. You just paid for a drink that they made it feel, made you feel so welcome to take. Right. But you just made your very they first put purchase. put that much alcohol in it. <laughs> and now you're stuck with a whale tail that you're going to drink out of the rest right. of the cruise because you remember that you just got, got screwed. Sucked. You got screwed. You got suckered into buying a whale tail thinking that Jay will welcome in you on board. <laughs> The six biggest rookie mistakes that first time carnival cruisers make is not paying attention mm. to the disembarkation instructions that are given to you in your room about a day or two before you get ready to get off the ship. Please pay attention to that because they have two different types of disembarkation. They have one what they call express, which is one that you can take your bags off yourself and they have one where you can check your bag so when they call your floor or your muster station you can come down and collect your bags but you need to really pay attention to that because some on some ships if you go down before your muster station or your floor is called You'll they might that. send you right back up but the most critical thing is when you do that, you make it very hard for other people to get off the ship because now you're crowding the elevators and crowding the halls because it's not your turn. Right. So please wait for them to call your muscle station or your floor before you disembarkate off the ship. Rookie mistake number seven that most first time cruisers and even experienced cruisers usually make is we don't like to feel like we're planning our life because most of the time our lives are planned enough as it is. So on vacation, you're trying to just go by the, you know, go with the flow and not really planning. But you do have to have an outline of things that you yes. really want to, to do. accomplish yes. while you're on this vacation. And then also, you don't want to get on the ship and then find out, oh, I want to go on a dolphin excursion with them. Oh, ain't none available. Oh, I want to get on ATVs now. Oh, not ain't not available. available. So plan, plan, plan. And we're not saying that you got to plan every second of your trip. So doing your research process when you watching vlogs on, online or reading blogs, start taking note of stuff that people say they enjoy and start writing that stuff down. Right. And, and then that way, when you get ready to go and book your cruise, you have things in mind that you already want to do. Right. Y'all watch enough vlogs to yeah. see, oh, that looks like fun. Ask them in the comments. Right. Most um, YouTubers will answer you in the comments. Be like, right. yeah, this is that, that is that. And you can make a mental note of it and yes. boom. So don't wing your first cruise. Don't wing it. Don't wing it. The eighth biggest rookie mistakes that first time carnival cruisers make is they pick the wrong cabin and the wrong category. Yes. And most of the time that happens because you're you trying know. to get the cheapest price. Hmm. Now, when it comes down to carnival cruises, let me tell you, if it's very cheap, it's cheap for a reason. For a reason. Now, if you are a person that you are afraid of seasickness or you have vertigo issues, right. you do not want to be in the front of the ship. The very front or the very back. Or the very back. You want to be somewhere in the middle. And most likely, if that price is hella cheap, it's, not it's gonna be in the front or it's gonna be in the back. And lower deck. Right. Now, some people, they fine, they get the rooms, they good, no yeah. seasickness. But for your first cruise, we say stick to the middle, man. The last thing you need to happen to you is you get seasick out there. And you're down at least a day. Right, because um, we had an instance with a family member that didn't listen to us. No, they never did. And they got seasick and we was on a five day cruise and they lost two days. Yep. So we don't, we don't want that to be you. So make sure you pick the proper cabin in the middle of the ship in the proper category. And I'm gonna include this right here too because as a first time cruiser, I know you don't know this. You don't know. Get the room that you want. Doing your research, if you see that a balcony is nice, get the balcony. Don't let people tell you, go ahead and get the interior because Carnival's gonna give you an upgrade to the balcony. I almost That's was greater than cuss. 
They don't, that don't happen all the time. That's don't right. depend on that. So if you the balcony that you want, get the balcony. All right, fam, if you enjoying this video, go ahead and smash the like button so the algorithm can send this video out to other first time cruisers, man. Just like you. The ninth rookie mistake <laughs> that people seem to make, and sometimes I don't think it's a mistake, it's more of a what can I get away with? Right, that's it right there. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is trying to bring on board things that are prohibited. Yes. People trying to bring on water bottles, bottle sodas, irons, different things weed. like weed, weed, um, hookah machines. And it's going more than likely you are opening yourselves up for your good hard earned money to be thrown away. Because right. if they find it and they catch it, it will be tossed. My mom, I'm gonna put her out there, <laughs> every cruise, for some reason she tries her luck to bring on at least three bottles of water. And then gets there and acts like, I didn't, I didn't know. know. And I'm sitting there steaming. <laughs> <laughs> because you're holding up the security line. They're like, ma'am, you can't yeah, do you can. this. Yeah, you can't bring these. Yeah, your, your open um, chips, things like that. You cannot do it. If your grandma made you some brownies and you want to bring them on board, you can't bring your grandma's brownies on because it could have some weed in it. I don't know your grandma. Your grandma could be into the edibles. We don't. They don't know either. Right. <laughs> but if you want to bring on some brownies, bring on some little <clears throat> debits, something that's pre-packaged, the real little debits, not the little debits. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm getting at here. <laughs> Make sure that you're not bringing on things that's going to be thrown away, prohibited items. And on Carnival's website, they have a list, an extensive list extensive. of everything you cannot bring on board with you. And if you can't find it on Carnival's site, we have it on our Carnival website, www.codefuntravel.com. We have a first time cruisers Q&A and we have everything there that you cannot bring on board. And we'll also put a list and a link down in the description field and the pinned comments. Yes. The 10th biggest rookie mistakes that first time cruisers make is dealing with excursions. I know we've been talking mm. about excursions. So the number one we've already talked about is not buying an excursion. The next thing would be that, yes, you did purchase an mm. excursion, but you purchased it through a third party versus with Carnival. Now, here's the difference. Yes, a third party would definitely be a hell of a lot cheaper than mm -hmm. Carnival, sure but will. you put yourself at more risk of missing the ship. What I mean by that is that when you buy a Carnival Cruises excursion, they cannot wait. leave you. They have to wait. Let me give you an example. Just on a cruise we just went on just a yes, few, just a couple like, of weeks ago. A couple of weeks ago, we was on an excursion that went over the Way time. Over. <laughs> so by the time we got back, everybody was on the ship. Waiting for the cruise waiting, director was waiting for wait, us. Waiting for us. But however, if we had been on a third party dolphin excursion, they could have they could have left us. Yes. So as a first timer, we we urge you to always use to use Carnival. Then once you get a little bit more experience, yeah, then yes, then, then you can kind of veer off and use third parties. We've we've used third party yeah, before, but yeah. we're comfortable with that, right? We, so we, yeah, we got time in. So yeah, so we urge you just to to purchase that through Carnival. And the final thing is also a you know with the scares, and we see people will will get in you know go to bahamas and just walk around in port which we say ain't nothing wrong with that but we was like get an excursion man yeah especially nassau bahamas we mm -hmm. said in nassau do, bahamas do, do an, an excursion. excursion you don't want to go downtown nassau because they are going to harass you so we hate to say it like that but yeah they they're they ready yeah they're they, they ready for you so several cruises back we had a couple came back the the wife was still shaking physically shaking. Yeah, she was shaking. was like, I wish that I had listened to y'all and did not go to downtown Nassau. She was yes. like, they put bracelets on, on us, you. Yep. demanded that we pay. Yep. And, and I was like, it is, it's different. It's, a, it's, it's just <clears throat> the way that they do business is different. The way that they try to entice people to buy is different. Right. And it can come off as overly aggressive. So if you're not a person that's used to it, it is very much a put off. Right. And it will, it will put you on high alert, like get away from me. So we say to avoid that, 
do a scourge and smash. Yeah. Rookie mistake number 11. You will be surprised how many times I get this. And I'm going to put my family out there. Because most of the time it's family that be like, uh, Lynette, I know I should have used you. You're a travel agent, but I didn't. Um, I don't book this cruise and what do I do? Yeah. What documentation do I need? Do you have a passport? No. Do you have your birth certificate? No. Knowing what documentation you need and bringing said documentation with you so that you can get on the cruise ship seamlessly. What I mean by that is, <laughs> if you don't have a passport, then you need a state issue um, birth certificate. Yes. Along with that, you're going to need a government issue ID to go ahead and get on board. Passport, you still gonna need a government issued ID. Do not show up there without your ID. They may not ask for it at check-in. Right. But the moment you exit that ship to get back on that ship, some of those ports will only let you back on that ship right. with a government issue ID. We have had that in both ports in Bahamas. We did. Mm -hmm. They don't want to hear nothing about your sign and sale card. They want to see a government issue ID before yep. you can get through their security checkpoints. So make sure that you have that with you so you can get on board and right. you can stay on board. Yeah. And, and we'll take it a step further because we had this happen to a family member. Take a picture of your government issued ID and put it in your phone. Right. Because if you lose your ID, at least they will take a picture mm -hmm. of it. Right. And that happened to a family member. She went out in port and she lost her ID. Yep. But luckily she listened to your girl. Yeah. She took a picture of it and yep. she showed him the phone and he was like, okay, we'll accept it. And let her back on the ship without any hesitation at all. Yep. The 12 biggest rookie mistakes that first time cruisers make and season cruisers. I'm going to put the season ones in there. I think they do it there, on purpose. Is not doing the mustard drill when you get on board. And they got to make the announcement and say, hey, if you have not done your mustard drill, you got to do it or we can't pull off. Now, what is the muster drill? Yeah. <laughs> what is it? So, the muster drill is a spot on the ship where they demonstrate and show you that if we have to abandon ship, the proper instructions that we need to do in order to get off with your life vest, mm -hmm. um, the boat that you're going to get into, and all that stuff. They it's go your off. safety brief. For that. And now they got the muster drill a whole lot easier it's now. It's like five minutes. Yeah, it's like, boom, like five minutes is over, done, and you can be about your business. Now, we, what we do is we do it as, as soon, soon as we, we get, get on, on board. We look and be like, okay, where's our muster station at? So and we, we go. And immediately. we go. Yes. Because and it's on it's on your um it's on your boarding pass. Yes. So you see it right there, it'll be like four C, B C, it's gonna be on there, you're gonna see it. Yeah. And they highly encourage you now to do it like that as soon as you get on board. Yeah. Just do it and get it over with. If you have enjoyed this video, you wanna check out this video right here, the top ten things you should not do mm. on a countable cruise. And we're gonna see you in the next video. Peace. Peace.